Welcome to Killer Hope, live from Sundance. Um, I'm sitting down right now with Kyle Gallner, uh, who's here with two movies at the Sundance Film Festival, Little Birds and Red State. Mm -hmm. um, so right before we started, I was asking you if this was your first time here, and you said actually it was not. Yeah, I came out here uh, a couple years ago with a movie called Red. It um, wasn't a competition. It got to screen. It was with uh, Brian Cox and Tom Sizemore. Mm -hmm. And what did you think like when you were here a few years ago? It was fun. It was, it was just very fast, and it was kind of like, I'm at a film festival, and <laughs> I've, I've never been to one. So it was kind of an overwhelming um, experience in a way. Like I kind of wish I could remember it better, but it was, it was fun. And now these two movies, have they premiered yet? Or? No, tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. Both of them tomorrow? Yeah, both of them. I pretty much um, within a couple of minutes, of, like within 45 minutes or so of each other, I had to literally get a driver to drive me back and forth. Like I had to leave the movie to go do something for one of the other ones to go back and back and forth. Well, I'm really excited about both of them because I worked with Juno Temple oh, on oh, Dirty what? Girl oh, and yes. Cracks. Um, and I know she's in Little Birds with you. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that movie. Um, Little Birds is pretty cool. It's kind of a uh, coming of age story of these two girls. Um, Juno's um, character just kind of feels stagnant and like she's kind of suffocating. She lives in the Salton Sea and wants you know nothing more than to get away and kind of find some adventure. And she meets um, me and my two friends and kind of runs away to California and um, lives this kind of Peter Pan lifestyle mm -hmm. with us for a while. And, you know, then you, re you realize that we're just a bunch of kids. You know, we get ourselves into trouble. And, um, yeah, she kind of learns a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, you got to tell me about Red State, too. Red State's hard to talk about without giving too much away. I know, and I don't, you know, I know um, everyone's anticipating I know, it. I and Kevin, and man, he's, he's, he's doing his best to keep that quiet. It's, it's... It's intense. It's very, I will say, uh, I think if you're a Kevin Smith fan, it's, um, you're going to be very su surprised. It's very In a good way? Yes, it's very stylized. It looks like nothing's ever done. Mm -hmm. um, it's shot very differently. Um, the style of the movie is very different. And, it, and it's, it's a pretty unforgiving, um, pretty brutal movie. I mean, it's, it's a very high tense, um, it's yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's 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 something that you kind of have to see to mm -hmm. to make your own gauge on it because it's 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 a tough movie to walk away from. Where you know you walk away from something like The Godfather and you're like, that's a good movie, right? Right. But it's like it's a good movie. I mean, it's really really well acted and and shot amazingly. But it's just so crazy that people are gonna probably have to digest it for a day or so. And what was the experience like? It was awesome. I mean, Kevin's great. He's a he's a really really great director. Um, and working with him in this new um, kind of style he, he's, he's doing. He's, he's a little less in your face and a little more, you know, he's going to stand back and let you, let you do your thing. And he, he let us play a whole lot and improvise. And um, so he was really fun to work with, and the cast was great. I got to know, you know, my two buddies very well, uh, Michael Angarano and um, Nicholas Braun, who they're both really good guys. And... It was a fun movie where everybody just kind of came to play and really cool. and, and really go for it. So I think uh, I think people are gonna be surprised by it. You know, uh, one of my first Sundances, not the very first, but among the first two or three, um, I was here with a movie I produced called Go Fish, and Kevin was here with Clerks. Mm. So I feel like you know. So you saw the saw the saw the whole thing. Saw the whole thing. Exactly. So yeah. I really I'm really I'm really looking forward to the movie. Yeah, it's cool. And now, when I look at all the movies that you've done or the career that you've had, I mean, you really jump around from television, from big budget stuff, from and to really tiny little indie stuff. Mm -hmm. And what's, I mean, what's your preference or what keeps you coming back to the indie films? Um, I think indie films, a lot of times, um, they're very brave stories. You know, there's there's stories that people want to take a chance on. You know, they might not throw you fifty million dollars to make the right. story, but it's. It's, it's a story that sometimes is very specific that when you make that movie, you know the people behind it are in it for the right reason. They, they want to make this movie. They stand by this movie. So I, I like the indie world in that, in that way. It's, it's stories that sometimes the studio system might not have the guts to make or, or want to make because it's not going to bring in right. a ton of money. But I'm, I mean, that's why you make an indie film. 
because it's a story you stand behind and it's and it's a story you want to tell. So I uh, I like I like indie films in that sense where you know you get to do something different, you get to do something unique. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, that's kind of why I keep coming back because I think the stories are are very brave and very fun and um, very truthful in a, in a lot of ways. Excellent. And so he, being here with those two movies, it must be like, I mean, this is like the pinnacle of, Yeah, it's cool. Know. It's fun. You know, I've, I've been doing it a long time. Um, you know, I've been acting for almost like 11 years and, um, and to have this and especially have two movies at the same time. Totally. I mean, it, it, like even to have one would have been great. And it's two movies that I, I stand by and I, I back very, very wholeheartedly. So it's, it's cool to have two things you really believe in up here at the same time. And it's going to be fun to see it with an audience and see what they think. And um, yeah, it's exciting. So one of the things that we want to talk about on this show mm -hmm. is social media mm -hmm. and you know, using social media to push, to, pr to promote films and using it to find audiences or identify audiences. And, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering, how do you use it in terms of Twitter or Facebook, in terms of reaching out to your fans or, um, or making them know about the work that you're doing? Is it something that's a big part of your life? Or? No, I'm pretty terrible with it, actually. <laughs> I don't have a Twitter. Um, I've kind of slowed down on my Facebook where I kind of keep it a little more personal now. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm probably not your prime candidate for social media. I think it's an amazing thing. I mean, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's times where if the right person tweets about a movie, it can kind of make or break your opening weekend. I mean, Do you really think so? I, I think so. What, what was it? District 9? District 9, right? Is that Alien movie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... It's one of the... One of the Alien movies. Yes. Uh, there, was a, there was a... They did like a secret screening, I think, in this one famous... I think she was a musician, tweeted about it. She's got like 50,000 followers, you know, or even more. And if that many people see it, and she says it's great, mm -hmm. I mean, odds are people will go see it because of that. I mean, I don't think it can make or break your opening weekend, but I think it can definitely um, it can help. Right. I think it's a, very interesting, it's a very interesting kind of new thing that I think people are starting to really utilize to promote their movies or promote their band or, you know. Right. But you don't see it necessarily as something that's a good fit for you, or at least not now. I just, I'd be terrible. I, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm not that, I, I can't just talk about myself. Like, I can't mm -hmm. sit there and be like, oh, I'm eating an orange <laughs> today. Um, or go see my movie. Like, I, right. I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of just feel it's, you know, the work will speak for itself. If you want to see a movie, you'll see a movie. And if you don't, you don't. Um, so I don't know. I'm 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 weird about self promotion. It, no, it I kind of makes you. it uncomfortable. I hear <laughs> like, you. Like, so yeah, not really my uh, not really my bag, I guess. Well, look, congratulations on having two movies Thank here. Thank you very much. And good luck tomorrow. That sounds like a marathon. It'll be good though. Um, but uh, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. Awesome. Okay.